What's up guys, welcome back to Fisher Hex, my name is Travis. In this video we're going to be talking all about the 30 gallon Nuval build. Now I originally had Triton Method on this and if you've been here for a while, you know that I transitioned off of Triton Method uh, back to two part. Now we're going to go ahead and talk about everything that's kind of happened to this tank over the last five and a half months to get you guys up to speed. And then we're going to talk about the new program that I'm going to be implementing on this along with my two part dosing through Polyp Lab. So let's go ahead and get started. Now right off the bat I want to say that I'm very happy with this build up to this point regardless of the ups and downs that it's gone through. Now in the beginning we started off with Cured Pukani that was part of my 300 gallon build and uh, we went ahead and also put SPS Acropora into this tank at day 6. So it was only up for 6 days before we put Acropora in it and then we did a 30 day comparison and you guys saw that video and I will link it in the description below but it did a ton of growth and the coloration and everything was great for that first 30 days. Uh, during that time, we went ahead and also implemented uh, the Triton method, and uh, that did great for the time that I was running it. And you guys know my complaint with Triton method uh, between the leaking containers, uh, the fact that it's never in stock. So those are really my two major, um, I guess, issues with Triton method, but the method does work. So if you can get the product and get a lot of it, uh, using it is definitely not a problem. Now, when I went ahead and ran out of Triton method, I decided I was going to transition this tank back to two-part, and that's really where the problems began. Now everything in the beginning of the transition was totally fine. It was really more of a balancing act of the alkalinity. Now Triton Method likes you to keep your DKH around 7 and I personally like to keep my DKH around 8.5 when I'm dosing 2 part. So for the sake of uh, consistency and balancing I went ahead and uh, tested my DKH every single day and dosed my 2 part accordingly to keep a stable uh, 7 DKH. Now once the transition was done I later raised it up to 8.5 where it is now and everything seems to be fine. But I will say that that balancing was expensive when you're testing every single day and it was a little nerve wracking because some days it required more, some days it required less. And with the transition and the growth changing in the tank after removing the trite method, it was definitely a balancing act that wasn't fun. Now the real problem started happening when the macroalgae died in the tank. And that happened about three and a half weeks in after the transition. Uh, I don't know what it was. I basically, I'm kind of chalking it up to it not getting what it was getting from the trite method. So the macroalgae in the Chater reactor died. I went ahead and replaced it with some new macroalgae from the 300 gallon. That was good for about a week and then it died. And I just did that for about a month. And then finally, now it's continually uh, starting to grow. It just was, I think that transition over was really hard on the macroalgae and it just couldn't keep up and it died. And uh, yeah, so that was really the only struggles that I had uh, with the transition. There were some bleaching on some Acropora, not to the point where it was dead, but it was definitely a loss in color. It went from dark blues to pretty much uh, translucent. It was, it was not a pretty sight, and it's finally starting to come through. It's just taking a little bit of time. Now, on top of all the issues regarding the transition, we also had to deal with uh, some stocking problems. Now, what I mean by that is I went ahead and removed my a smaller snowflake eel, Nigel. I went ahead and put him in that 30-gallon tank just for the sake of having um, him out of the quarantine tank. That was it. This wasn't a permanent solution. It was more or less like a temporary home to make him a little bit more comfortable than being in a quarantine tank. And uh, he did great for a few days, and then he just started destroying the tank, uh, lifting up all the sand, trying to move the rock around, and uh, just destroying the tank sand everywhere it was a mess and uh basically between trying to uh, deal with the sand being all over the place the nutrients from the sand being spread up into the water column and also keeping him happy and fed it just became too much of a nutrient issue uh, having him in that tank so i went ahead and removed him put him in my uh, 20 gallon long quarantine tank and then i later sold him to a client and uh yeah so that was probably my fault i wanted to make him more comfortable but I ended up sacrificing the tank a little bit more, and I probably would have went a different route if I uh, had another option. Now, there is one more change that I made to the tank that you guys have probably already noticed, and that is that I removed all of the sand. And uh, the only reason behind that is I just don't like the look of sand. I tried it out for a little while. I gave it five and a half months. That's it. I just don't like the look of sand. On clients' tanks, yes, that's fine. But majority of my clients actually rather go bare bottom, so it kind of works out for me. And uh, yeah. I went ahead and removed all the sand and it was pretty easy. I did it over about uh, two and a half weeks or so worth of water changes and I only had about an inch and a half sand so there really wasn't any issues. And all the nutrients that was trapped in the sand was already kicked up from the eel so it kind of worked out in my favor. Now with all the changes in the events that have happened over the last five and a half months, the tank is doing very well. It's stable, we're getting good coloration, growth back, and I have a very consistent 8.5 DKH through the two-part dosing. And uh, so with that being said, we're going to go ahead and transition over to a new program and see what kind of coloration and growth we can get out of this. 
Now, Polyp Lab went ahead and sent me their refresh system, and I'm definitely interested in trying this out. I did a lot of research on it to kind of pinpoint how I'm going to dose, set it up, and uh, we're going to go ahead and move over to the Polyp Lab website. I'll show you exactly what I'm going to be dosing, when I'm going to be dosing it, and then we'll move into my aquatic log program, which sets up the reminders uh, to go ahead and dose every day. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, here we are at polyplab.com, and this is the system refresh that I plan on using on the 30-gallon tank. Now, as you guys can see here, there are the four bottles, but I do plan on adding a fifth called Polyp Lab Colors, and we'll talk about that in great detail once I get through these four components. So let's go to move down to what refresh is. System Refresh is a true low nutrient reef keeping system. It's kind of like Zeovit minus the reactor. And that's really what has drawn me to this program is the fact that I don't have to have a reactor with media in it that needs to be shaken every day. It just works out well for my lifestyle and I can still harness that uh, low nutrient system, get the coloration and growth that I want out of it, but minus that whole step of having to shake the reactor. So this works out pretty good and I can't wait to see how it turns out. Now, some of the benefits of this program is enhance uh, coloration of corals, again, because of the lower nutrients, the increased growth rates, uh, also because of the lower nutrients, uh, improved in water quality, uh, decreased nuisance algae outbreaks, improve fish health and decrease in parasite outbreaks. So these are all very good things and I can't wait to see how it turns out in the system. And uh, yeah, so let's go ahead and move on to the uh, four parts of the system. I'll break down what they are and I'll talk about how I'm going to dose them for this 30 gallon tank. All right, so the first part of this program we have is RF Genesis. Now, this is the bacteria strand that you'll dose on a daily basis. Now, if we come down here to the dosing chart, we have uh, one drop per 25 gallons of system volume every single day. Now, because my system is approximately 30 gallons, I'm just going to go ahead and keep it at one drop because there's no reason to overdose. I'd rather underdose a program than overdose it. So I'm going to go ahead and stick to one drop of this every single day, and that will, uh, that will increase and populate the uh, beneficial bacteria that will be used to keep the low nutrient system. Them. Now moving over to the second part here, which is the RF fuel. This is your carbon source. This is what you'll dose on a daily basis as well. And uh, this is what provides food for the beneficial bacteria. Also um, has amino acids in it, which is good for the corals. And it's just uh, something that will need to be dosed every single day as well. Now the dose and recommendation for this is actually on the bottle. And you guys will see that here in a second. Now what it comes out to is for the first week, I'm going to be dosing 0.5 milliliters of this every single day to my tank because it's 0.5 milliliters per 25 gallons. And as you guys can see on the chart, it actually uh, increases slowly over the first uh, few weeks and then drops back down to the original dosing. Now that is a, a chart that you'll have to go ahead and basically uh, calculate what you have for water volume and then just dose accordingly. All right. Now moving on to the third part of the system, we have RF acids. Now this is going to be the amino acids uh, for the low nutrient system. This is what's going to keep your coral happy and healthy and have coloration. And uh, so it's going to be very important to dose this every single day as well. And the dosing recommendation is exactly the same as the Genesis. It's going to be one drop per 25 gallons every single day. Now, moving over to the last part of this program, it's the RF+. Plus. Now, this is going to be the food source for the coral and uh, as well as part of the bacteria. Now, what this does is it allows you to uh, feed the coral, keeps them happy, keeps them healthy, and also allows you to have good coloration and growth. So this is also going to be a product that you're going to want to dose every single day. It's going to be one drop, again, per 25 gallons of water volume. So that's the four part system for this program. Let's go to move over to uh, the fifth part that I'm actually gonna be adding to this program. And I'll talk about why I'm doing it here in a second. Now this is gonna be the Polyp Lab Colors. Now the reason why I'm doing this is because I'm using an ultra low nutrient system because that's what I plan on going on. And I'm also uh, dealing with some um, damaged corals. As you guys can see here, it also helps them heal faster, promotes pigment growth. And now because the system has gone through some uh, pretty big transitions and it's still struggling getting its coral uh, you know, health back and coloration back, this is gonna be a good product to dose uh, for the meantime, we'll see how it turns out long term, but this is going to be good to help get the tank back to where it should be. So that is my five parts for this program. And uh, let's go ahead and talk about uh, future plans for this program and update wise and all that good stuff. All right, when it comes to an update, you guys should expect one in the next 30 days. I'm gonna go ahead and start this program today and then post this video tomorrow. And then in 30 days, you guys should see exactly the transition I've gone through. I'll show you the ups and downs. I'll show you uh, the coloration, the changes, the growth, everything. You guys will get a full in-depth review on this program in the next 30 days. 
Now, when it comes to nutrient export, I'm only going to be doing a bi-weekly water change of 20%, and I'm not using a skimmer, so I don't have any other export method besides the Chata Reactor, and I don't know if the Chata Reactor is going to continue to grow after we move into a low nutrient system. Most likely, it's going to die, so I'll just have to remove that reactor altogether. Now, when it comes to uh, media like phosphate and carbon and stuff, I'm only going to be using the um, Polyp Lab Carbon. I'm not going to be using any GFO because we're just going to go with the system and let it run uh, as it's intended. Now, that's pretty much it, guys. I will give you guys an update, let you know how it turns out. Wish me luck, and shout out to Polyp Lab for hooking me up with this uh, program. And again, I can't wait to see the results. Well, guys, that's about it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it and found it to be somewhat entertaining. If you liked the video, definitely give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like the video, go ahead and give it a thumbs down because either way, it helps me out with my analytics. So even if you're hating, you're actually loving me and helping me out. So just keep that in mind. And uh, yeah, shout out to Polyp Labs for hooking me up with this program. I'm definitely, definitely excited to try it out. And uh, if you guys want to go ahead and try this program for yourself, check out uh, polyplab.com and I will put a link to their website in the description below. All right, guys, I'll see you in the next video. Peace.